Hello, this is uh, Michael Ellis. I'm with Kimberly LaPointe, and we are continuing our series uh, on spiral dynamics. We've been going through a number of phases in a general kind of a way, and remember that when we finish these general descriptions of the levels of spiral dynamics, we'll return uh, and talk about it from a Christian theological biblical point of view and, and lay that, because I think you'll find a very, very helpful application to understand um, uh, the, the um, Christianity and the biblical story, where people are. Why are people very different about how they're expressing their, their faith? I think you'll begin to uh, see why that is. So we're now um, into stage orange, which is the fifth stage that we are looking at. Um, we've, had, we've had beige and then purple, which is the magical uh, tribal stage is purple. And then we go into red, which is a very individualistic uh, power uh, kind of a stage, then we go into blue, which is a law and order stage. And now blue uh, yields to orange. Um, and orange is, is again, another individual stage. Um, and when, when we're talking about blue, we're talking about orange, and then when we talk about green in the next episode, we're really where, where most of America is. Now the world's in different, different spots with this, but if you look at America in the Western world, these are the three uh, stages that we, are, we mostly find uh, the residents of these uh, nations to be in. And, and uh, so it's very, very important to us. And, and you know, blue is still very important in, in American life. Probably orange is more so. It, it, it really has to do with a lot of uh, success orientation and, um, um, and uh, acquisitional uh, building for the future. Um, so... So the whole, in the whole world, we, we see about 30% of the whole world is, about, is orange. But when you get into the United States and Western um, countries, that number is more like 50%. So, you know, half of Americans, you could imagine, are probably mostly in the orange level. Um, and in terms of influence, because, because orange is, is about wealth and power, we see that even it has more influence than even the the demographic would, um, would allow because it's controlling so much of the resources that in fact empower and, and influence the world. So, um, so we see orange concentrated in, um, in many, many places in the world in government and private uh, in industry leadership, for instance. Okay. Well, where did orange come from? It, it, it seemed to have had some some evidences um, starting about uh, uh, 2,500 years ago, um, particularly in Greece, who you think about the rise of democracy there and of uh, mathematics and some scientific pursuits and Socrates coming on uh, the, the laws of logic. And so there's, there's, there's sort of elements to it. And then that kind of, kind of abated uh, after that period and it surfaced seemingly at various times. But in the last several hundred years, it's come to the, to the forefront and really taken hold and begun to really expand uh, as what appears to be a, a more permanent stage of, of uh, cultural and human development. So those markers for um, when it really began to come in a few hundred years ago would be the Enlightenment, that period, the Renaissance uh, was a, a part of that. Um, the Industrial Revolution certainly was a, a piece of that. Even the Protestant Reformation, because you think about uh, we've said before in blue that most of, um, of religious folks of the world are actually in blue. Most people in Christianity are in the blue stage primarily. And uh, so we had this reaction in the Protestant Reformation to a very, very blue and structured Roman Catholic Church where it saw some things that were not working and, and, and that was sort of individual freedom was recovered in that. So it was a movement into a very orange structure for the Protestant church uh, that very much reflected the orange stage. Now, I will say that with that structural change, it then became very blue in its own right, but a very different blue than what it had reacted to. So those are some of the, the markers and, and triggers along the way for moving in historically into stage orange. Now, orange is a return to an individualist stage, remembering that we move between we stages and me stages. And so the last me stage was red, then we went to a we stage, a communal stage, which is blue. Now we're back to an orange stage. Um, 
a little bit different than red in that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's got better manners. It's a more um, polite version of red, uh, but it's still interested in itself. And uh, so we see that individual stage. And so we can, can understand very, very easily. And, and we start begin to think about honing in on what orange looks like. What does it look like in our experience? We, we can see that, that uh, those characteristics of individualism, of achievement orientation for me, my achievement. Now it's okay when people come along, but it's really about my achievement uh, in an overarching kind of a way. Uh, it's, and it's moving uh, outside of the authority structure, the external authority structure that we see in blue, which would be uh, God or um, it, uh, the, the rule of law, the king, whatever it may be. It's moving from an outside authority to an inner authority, um, once again, in a me sort of way driving toward success in life. We also see in this stage the rise of rationality and of science being introduced at this particular stage. And uh, in stage orange, individual effort and individual achievement is of paramount importance. Now, how do we see this movement from blue to orange begin to happen? Well, there, there are a number of factors, some of which are these. We saw in blue the idea that there's one absolute truth that there is, there's a rule of law there is the importance of order and discipline and and uh, those were, were helpful especially coming out of red and getting, getting you know the rise of civilization is all here and, and very important uh, but there's also that you know these aspects of duty of of appreciating hierarchies in blue um setting up around hierarchies and delayed gratification then there's the, the reaction that we see that moves one to blue that sees that as sort of restrictive after a while, that it's, it's holding me back. I've got my own aspirations and we've got these structures that are corporate communal structures that, that seem to be you know, somewhat maybe oppressive or maybe just, just, uh, just in the way of uh, me really expressing myself and really be getting what I want. And that's a piece of it too, why the movement in there. Because we're working hard for the community and uh, sometimes it doesn't seem as fair to us that, that maybe we're not getting what we what appears to be our share of of what we should deserve from our level of work now we see that in red but it, as well but now we're seeing it with that politeness that we've talked about and uh so it's different than red in that way it's not it doesn't have the violence uh and um aggression uh overt aggression that we see in stage red and uh, there's also um, the idea of moving into from blue um, from uh, some things that are more efficient. Bureauc bureaucracies are not particularly efficient. We know that from our own experience in human life. Uh, they tend to be kind of slow moving and a lot of stages and steps. And if you want to get something done quickly and efficiently, it's, that's, bureaucracies, aren't, bureaucracies are not going to help you with that. So the moving into efficiencies and better ways of doing things and uh, newer, innovative ways of thinking outside the box. Um, and that begins to surface from blue into orange. Um, and uh, so, again, we mentioned science, too. When one starts studying science, um, that can be a, a, a help to begin opening up to new ways of looking at our world and ourselves that can uh, lead us into to orange. Now, blue does does appreciate science, but it, frankly, it appreciates it to the degree that it supports its particular ideas um, and uh, rejects it when it's when those uh, science seems to be speaking against that. Um, but here in in um, in orange, we see actually science having more authority often than those structures and those absolutes that we saw in stage blue. Um, and I think one of the one of the most uh, you know, important things is we see that that is, that the that sat, satisfaction in sort of self improvement and self um, uh, being self generated, being self directed, you know, all those things that, that 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 can move us into the orange stage. And so, um, we want to look at some of the traits that uh, characterize. That's not all the traits, but some of the bigger ones. And Kimberly is going to take us through some of those. Hi, yeah. So 
some of this Father Michael's already covered, but um, you know, individuals in Orange, they're, this is where there's a hyper focus on being rational. They also are materialistic. They strive for excellence. Um, they have sort of an elitist view of themselves and they tend to want to advance that position. Um, they become quite image sensitive and results driven. Um, but they also drive towards invention and innovation as, as Father Michael was saying. So, um, you know, the highest points coming, you know, in terms of Renaissance and the Reformation, you know, these are more thought expansions, but in terms of invention, obviously the Industrial Revolution, the post-World War II reconstruction, these are just explosions in invention and our ways of working and moving from, you know, a more collective doing things one way to more a value on advancing individual ideas. And so therefore you have a real birth of capitalism. So, you know, a real sense of making money off of a better way of doing something and, and each person sort of contributing an improvement. So capitalism really is born out of orange um, in both productive and exploitive ways. So, you know, everything becomes about how can I do it better? What's my angle? How can I make more money? And so also that what comes out of orange is the mass production and consumption of goods. And so like a shift in focus from, you know, something that is individually made with care for a specific purpose to just mass, massive production to, to fill a need. Um, a big focus on the immediate gratification and the joy of living. So, you know, what brings me individual joy rather than blue, where you came out with your sense of purpose coming from a service to something higher that, that it's not that you don't have joy in blue, but that it comes out of living your life in service to either their leadership or God or a sense of authority or, or you know, a, a service to each other. Um, orange is much more about, um, you know, individual gratification. So in that way, you know, they do move to a very secular way of thinking in, in many cases, very individualistic, um, but they do appreciate the whole. So like Father Michael said, better manners than red. Um, you know, they, they do appreciate other people. But the friction that comes between um, orange and blue is that fundamental move from an outside authority to an inner authority. It only matters really what I think and what advances my position. And that has a big impact on faith communities in terms of the way that an orange person sort of sees themselves and that relationship to faith. So it, it's, it does not become, even for people who move through orange and stay in a, in a faith life, which many do, um, you know, blue stays that ring in the tree but they now have sort of a way in which they take and leave certain parts of it. Um, orange loves democracy. Um, so here in the emergence of orange, you have the birth of kind of the idea of a secular democracy. Um, it, you know, whereas blue prefers more of a theocracy, you know, they, they like kind of bureaucracies and monarchies and things that are very stable. Um, orange is where we see the birth of the idea of a secular democracy. In modern times, they can be Republican or Democrat. It's not about sort of lining up to a particular ideology in that way. Um, but they believe that other people matter for the same reason that they matter. Um, and so other people matter just not as much as I do. They're selfish in the sense that they want to advance kind of their own station in life. Um, but they think everybody else should have that right too. So that's a, you know, kind of a very democratic um, mindset. They want others to have freedom and autonomy and human rights. Um, so human rights, you know, become more prominent in this phase. So in, in a more positive way. So, um, you know, and democracy is seen as a system and emerges as a system that promotes individual freedoms. Um, when confronted with rational and scientific thought, some will completely reject that absolutism of blue though. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, there is a lot of atheism and, and, and being agnostic that comes with orange because for some, you know, they can't sort of make room for both. Um, one can go through orange without rejecting faith, but um, they will be, leave behind that very singular view um, for a more expanded understanding. Um, so you can, one of the pitfalls of being orange is that you can become very myopic and, and think that um, science can solve everything. So you can have this view 
um, that, that medicine and science and data, that there is an answer in all things. And you might maybe reject sort of the value of emotions and um, the, the softer sciences and social sciences and, and things that, that go into, you know, having empathy and compassion. Um, and so orange will set, you know, a higher statistics than a Bible verse. And so, you know, Bible verse is not doctrine. They will see it, um, you know, they will need to see it more academically, likely. Um, and so, you know, also a, a more academic analysis of the Bible comes out of a more orange viewpoint, um, you know, so a, a more of a time linear academic study uh, of the Bible. Um, they do tend to see consciousness as only brain activity. So in terms of that science view of who we are and why we're here and, and sort of what we are. Um, and so, because if it's not quantifiable to them, it can be less real um, or, or not real at all. So the famous atheist Sam Harris um, addresses in some of his books the idea of meditation. But to him, meditation does not have that spiritual element. It's not about um, a connection to a higher power. It's about just a mindfulness and, and centering your brain activity to, um, to just be in a meditative place and that you're focusing on your own consciousness. So it, it's a different view of those things than Christians have. Um, the worldview is, um, takes on a world-centered view, and it's uh, in the sense that the world is full of new opportunities to learn and grow your rational thinking and new things you can learn. And so it does tend to be very global in its view. Um, they have a greater desire for understanding and tolerance, um, but they still prefer themselves and their own groups. Um, Orange can really demonize those who haven't succeeded. Um, this is where we see the emergence of the idea that if you are in a lesser position or less successful, that you probably just didn't work as hard um fails to see kind of its own privilege so it will view everyone as just having not really applied or not learned enough or not worked hard enough long enough that type of thing um you know they have driven forward a lot of advances innovation in medicine and science and modern times so they continue to be a real engine of that in our society today um there's quite a lot of monetary greed that comes with orange um, because of the success and the individual focus. Again, that materialism and capitalism are core values. Um, libertarianism is also something that comes in orange. And so um, the rejection of the idea that say, for instance, the government has a role in being um, protective or prescriptive to you in any way um, is a very orange idea that you have a self-reliance, that you are more able to care for yourself than the government is for you. You're, you're more able to make good decisions you know, in your life than the government is, um, is, a, is a very orange idea and a real break um, with that blue, even though um, you know, libertarianism and sort of conservatism, I think in this modern time have become, you know, sort of aligned in many ways. It still was born out of an orange way of thinking that, you know, like I am more self-reliant or, or better off. Um, there's a lot of doubt and skepticism at this, at this stage. Um, so doubt for almost all things except for oneself. So that's the pitfall and the unhealthy part of orange is they tend to place that skepticism on everything around them except um, for themselves. So it's again, that rejection of the softer science, the psychological honest assessment of yourself. Um, Self-help becomes a real replacement for religion at this stage, you know, more of an empirical view of what are the steps that I can take to better myself to achieve more. Um, so the explosion of the self-help industry um, is a very orange artifact in our culture. Um, orange likes spiral dynamics in that way because um, it is self-help in a way, or at least it's a way to make an understanding of each other and the world and societies. It makes it gives it an empirical framework that that's very appealing to orange, um, and they see it. But they tend to see spiral dynamics in a flawed way because they see it as a hierarchy as of like winners and losers and you know that you're moving up an achievement ladder you're you're which you know we've covered here a lot is is not really a perfect understanding of spiral dynamics it's it's not about that it's not about like graduating to the next stage 
necessarily. It's about sort of taking on parts and growing to the next stage if, if that's what you want. Um, so they, you know, they tend to sort of uh, manipulate it in that way. Um, they like unending, unyielding growth and gains that are limitless. And so they're not good at moderating. Um, they tend to be, you know, very resource greedy, very, very hard on the environment, um, that type of thing. Uh, they love money, sex, possessions, being cool, gadgets, consumerism, you know, again, all about self gratification, all of that sort of, you know, anything that makes me feel better that I enjoy. With that comes an enjoyment, like a voyeuristic enjoyment of pop culture and celebrity and social media and branded clothing and signs signs of success signs of status becomes a big thing for orange um, celebrity following becomes you know sort of a goal in that way if I will be valued if I'm like that um, and so they can get quite sucked into um, thinking like people that they aspire to be um, in that way because they see it as like a placeholder. Um, so yeah, they are the drivers of, of really unsustainable consumerism. Um, they're not likely to pay for something that is more sustainable or more responsibly sourced. And so you can see where this will really ultimately lay some of the groundwork for a lot of um, green thinking because they will really exhaust resources um, and they just see a drive for more and more and more and more and they, they don't have good checkpoints for that. Um, marriage for love though is an orange concept, even though we've kind of talked about them not being as good with emotion. Um, it's more, think about it like historically before this, um, marriage is more of a business arrangement maybe, or more of something that, you know, is just more stable. And in orange, marriage is more about self-gratification and enjoyment. And, and so, you know, the idea of marrying someone that, um, you know, a compatibility in that way is, emerges in orange. Um, Mar orange again can be very blind to its own privilege in an unhealthy form. Um, you know, this is where the rejection of kind of a welfare state and, and judging, helping others can become quite extreme um, and uh, can be destructive to the environment. It can be destructive to relationships in their lives and ultimately destructive in an unhealthy form to themselves. Um, as they go into kind of like an overworked place, um, you know, valuing working long hours over family relationships, that type of thing. The education view in Orange, um, they love acquiring knowledge and skills, um, especially for it to be more successful, um, to be more successful. Uh, Orange draws a lot of confidence from acquiring new skills and knowledge. They're on a never ending quest to improve themselves um, and to improve their material gains. And particularly in Western cultures um, where Orange is so prominent, like here and most of Europe and Australia, um, education is seen as a real natural vehicle for the accumulation of material wealth. It's very tied to material success in our culture, of course. And so um, here it's really education, higher education is really valued as a vehicle for advancement, maybe overly so, right? We're starting to have those conversations about, we sort of push this very orange idea and maybe it's not really the right choice for everyone. And we're, you know, starting to see some maybe correction to that, but you know, it, it was a very orange way of thinking that probably drove us to this place of thinking that you were less than if you didn't go to college. Um, that's a very orange artifact. Um, so very into education, but maybe not so much into, um, you know, religious teaching, government intervention into education, restrictive curriculums, you know, this type of thing. And so Orange might see those as restrictive or limiting and even become resentful of them. Um, so you start to see uh, lots of less restrictive curriculums and lots of agitation um, you know, maybe with Common Core or, you know, things like that, if you, if you look at that as being, you know, too prescriptive in terms of the way that we teach. Um, so power and authority, um, leadership looks quite different than that of the colors on either side. Um, so in blue, 
leader, the leadership model is more of a servant leadership model. You are either um, in service of a higher leader or, in, or God or, or something like that. Um, and, and green becomes a much different view of leadership that we'll get to later. But in orange, we swing back a little bit towards that strength idea that is in red, um, but again, not violently and not as um, ruthlessly. Um, but leaders in orange are those that are more successful, more skilled, more powerful, more influential, persuasive, and rich. And so it's not about brute physical strength anymore or violence or takeover. It's about those um, leadership skills that are maybe more modern in the sense that like we are able to be very persuasive and influential. So therefore we gain in power, um, particularly within organizations and career arcs. There's a lot of oligarchy in orange, um, lots of rich, powerful people in control. So the richer and more powerful they become, you know, the, the more that becomes a cycle. Um, they can see capitalism as for the masses, um, but, but higher up, they can be more socialistic. Um, so, you know, for instance, during the economic crisis, the poor lost their homes. Um, while big corporations got bailouts, that's a very orange um, situation, you know, and again, you can see where some of those extreme examples start to lay the fertile ground for a more green way of thinking and, and how do we sort of calibrate these wealth gaps and injustices. And so a lot of the orange extremism, you know, really lays that fertile ground for later. Um, it um, prefers masculine traits to feminist tra traits, so it can be quite patriarchal. Um, so, you know, orange, women will often go through the stage orange quicker than men. Um, not always, um, I would say I'm myself pretty orange, but often it is a, a more valued, um, I think, sort of tact for men to sort of lay in so men will more often um, be valued for being quite orange and 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 wanting to accumulate power and wealth and, and stuff certainly within you know industries which are still pretty patriarchal in a lot of places um the biggest threat to orange um on a societal level um, is that we will keep accumulating power and technologies particularly war technologies um, that ultimately threatens sort of total destruction because you, if you keep inventing better and more ways to be powerful, then you know it's not impossible to imagine a, a place in which that becomes mutually destructive um, or self-destructive. Um, again, a purposeful life for an orange per person is one that is self-reliant um, and and getting to the best position that you can um, and the vision of gaining power comes from also improving and innovating a system that you're within. And so if you are a person who wants to gain power in your work life, then you probably do it through innovating ways of, of, of doing whatever job that you're in. And so for me, you know, I would want to, you know, obviously invent a new scientific product or a new antibody or, you know, a new therapeutic approach or a new diagnostic approach um, that drives me forward. The more successful I am at that, obviously I'm going to move up in status. Um, Orange sees work in a very data-driven way. Um, they want to deal only in the rational. Um, so that constant state of doubt can be really exhausting for the people around them. Um, you know, if you're a systems worker and you're a person that really values contributing to that data set, constantly being questioned by Orange can be really exhausting. Um, they value action. They, again, like Father Mike was saying about the rejection of bureaucracy, um, they are very, very frustrated about, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting that doesn't really advance. So whereas a blue person might sort of value the stability of very deliberate thinking and very deliberate decision making, orange tends to be very, they want to be more agile than that. They want to, you know, try it and be more experimental. Um, they can, I'm very guilty of this myself, they can be, um, less touchy-feely in, in, in a work environment in the sense that 
they have a harder time with kind of HR interventions that want them, um, you know, to think about their feelings about things or how their coworkers feel about things. That can be very triggering to Orange um, and met with a lot of skepticism about their utility, lots of eye rollers in Orange at those types of, you know, when you have the work retreat day where you write in your journals and you do the trust building exercises, you know, oranges are the ones that are kind of being snarky about that. Um, if you want to really stimulate Orange in a work environment, you have to make their individual goals align with the organization's goals. And so that kind of goal tree idea of like, this is how you can succeed in a way that drives us forward. That's the way to work with Orange. Um, so that wraps up kind of the traits <laughs> that we had. Well, we've, in each of these stages, we've talked about uh, where in human development, individual human development, that uh, these stages would come. And the further we go with the stages, there will be fewer people that actually have, will ever move into these stages. So, you, you know, it's just um, because they're more cutting edge as the further we go. Now, orange is one of those that not everybody's going to get to. Um, and it's not quite as tied to necessarily a, a time of uh, an age of our life, you know, that in, like the teen years are very, can be very red, for instance. Um, so the, the other markers that are involved here, that probably the earliest we, we would develop orange is if we go away to college. Uh, we talked, Kimberly was talking about the value of education and, and we know that, that that can expand our horizons in, in all sorts of ways. So we may resist that, we may be open to that, we may be, um, uh, influenced heavily by some of these ideas, uh, rightly or wrongly, but they're, they're there. And so there's an, an opening that can happen by the college experience that, that begins to move us into, into orange thinking and the, the idea of being uh, of rash, more rational thinking, of scientific thinking, of new ideas, new ways of doing things, more efficient ways of doing that, inventiveness, all those things we've talked about here. So um, that and there are also, also another piece that can, ha can happen in college, or certainly those, those years when we begin to, to move into er uh, early adulthood, um, middle, you know, uh, that we can also become more hedonistic. Um, we see that, you know, a college experience can have a lot of hedonism in it, and in and, and early 20s and that sort of thing, mid-20s. Um, but it ties in with orange, because remember that we've got an individually focused thing, it's very much a pleasure oriented of um, satisfying oneself uh, of all the um, the bells and whistles of life that should show success or achievement so so hedonism can be a, a piece of that uh, there's um, often uh, a lot of personal achievement in that where we're, we're trying to advance with winning awards and excelling in different ways when we get into different aspects of our life whether college or our career um, there's a love of entertainment um, in, in that. So we can have things like ne Netflix binging is very orange, uh, going out uh, on the town with friends, uh, drinking, those sorts of things. Uh, there's a rise in comedy of vulgarity and cursing that often happens because we don't have those absolutes and those restraints that we had in blue. And so there's kind of a new freedom that kind of maybe opens uh, some people up in that particular way as well. Um, also, as, as we're moving out of particularly um, of a blue environment that we maybe have been in and starting to move into to exploring orange, we may actually be moving away some, for some, from some things like uh, church rituals, of uh, community, community restraints, of, uh, of uh, and feelings of being anonymous. Uh, these new communities give rise to, to seeing a new vision of who we are individually, a new self, self-image that we're beginning to, to um, open up to developmentally. Who, who are we is a, is a question of orange, because uh, we've been so identified in blue, for instance, with um, the community and whatever defines that community as being us. And now we're really beginning to find who we are. And so, um, that uh, is a part of human development that we can go through in orange. Um, so uh, there's this movement of introduction to logical thinking, of critical observation, analytical thinking, 
and a desire to explore and develop individual talents and abilities that begin to open us uh, developmentally into, um, into orange. It's an expansive period of new horizons. Um, also, one of the things that can happen here developmentally is being triggered by, um, by restlessness in some of those blue, uh, blue environments of um, personal circumstances, of job, marriage, church, any number of things that can trigger an autonomous reaction in, our, in us individually. Uh, to strike out on one's own, to again, to find ourselves, to seek individual pleasures or individual accomplishments. Um, so, for instance, seeking promotions, for more money, more power, more status, um, and, uh, and moving outside of longstanding career for more growth-oriented uh, exposures. So, um, some examples. That's kind of just a few. There are many, many examples we could throw out here. We're going to keep it very, very limited. But some ideas to kind of help you get an idea of what, what orange could look like. The Enlightenment, we mentioned that. The birth of democracy is super orange. The Reformation, we've talked about that. Um, and uh, let's see, Wall Street is very super orange. Scientists, middle class, market capitalism, libertarianism. Most of the institutions in the West will be orange. Deconstructionism, which is going to be look, looking at our faith and, and through the eyes of this orange piece. Protestant liberal churches, Episcopal, Congregational, Presbyterian, Unitarian churches often are centered in, in orange. Um, Non-denominational mega churches can be very orange. Interestingly enough, more structurally so, because they will embrace things like a lot of technology and efficiency and you know, have all of the, those kind of bells and whistles of orange hugely. Yet their theology may still be very, very blue. Um, and so there's kind of a mixture there, but, but structurally they can be very, very orange. Um, excellence, uh, the whole idea of excellence, that is a term and, and as a motivation, being the best, achieving something and success, being excellent at everything. Um, Self-help emphasis, we see, so I'm so speaking Christianly, um, you see a lot of orange say in Joel Osteen, which is um, kind of, how do you position yourself to be a successful human being? What are the elements to do that? Very orange thinking. And even in those sorts of things in the mega churches too, they're very orange in the sense that if you like what they say, then you can, you can subscribe, you can pay to subscribe to online streaming, for instance, right? Um, or buy their music or pay for their counseling, those sorts of things. Um, other examples would be the new atheists like Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Liberation theology, Martin Luther King, uh, advanced technologies, CEOs are typically orange, big oil, Manhattan, uh, emerging China, banks, advertising. Uh, some professional sports figures are, and people uh, are orange, high fashion. Um, Hollywood, now, Hollywood celebs are actually normally green in their view, but the industry of Hollywood is uh, very much uh, orange. It's about making successful movies that make a lot of money. That's their aim. So it's not the most meaningful um, message kind of thing they're looking for. It's the one that's going to be most profitable. So the industry there is orange. Life coaches would be orange, human genome project, humanists, yuppies, and the list could go on and on. Um, what do we learn from orange? Every stage has something to learn. And as, as Kimberly rem reminded us, there's that, those uh, rings of the tree. We keep um, transcending and including the best of those things. And there are some wonderful things to learn in orange uh, and what they're benefiting culture and people as individuals. For instance, medical breakthroughs are orange. They've come in orange. Scientific discoveries. Healthy competition comes in orange. Um, to be encouraged to develop, personally develop and become better versions of ourselves comes from orange. The idea of, ind of independence, to budget uh, for the future, to make money, to teach others to make money, uh, to be financially independent. Um, the uh, 
there's a kind of deconstruction that, that happens in orange that brings into question some of the things of earlier stages that we, we may, need, may need to be a little bit critical of, opening us then to further stages. So orange is critical for opening for other stages. We can't, can't skip any of these stages, uh, clearly. Um, there's also in, um, an encouragement to think for ourselves that we learn in orange. Strong emphasis on social justice, which gets played out a lot more in green, but it gets established in the orange level of uh, treating people as human no matter where they, where they are. So this beginning of a world-centric view. Now, it's not been true up to this, this point. There's been bigger circles as we go along of our group, but now we, in orange, for the first time, we're beginning to see the, the whole world um, as being unified in some a particular fashion. Again, will be developed later on in later stages, but it finds its entry point here. Um, uh, the idea of being uh, skeptical is important there. Um, we should also learn to be skeptical of ourselves in, in orange, that would be a growth point. But skepticism has its, its, its place of, in, in terms of evaluating things and, and seeing through things that maybe um, are misrepresenting themselves. So, um, so what we want to learn is in orange is to be skeptical of ourselves, not just of other things as a way to grow and develop. Um, now, how do we move to stage green? And, and I think again, to reiterate that we're in blue, orange, and green, this is where we are culturally. We're in just heavily invested in some aspects of this. In fact, we're recording this uh, two days after our presidential election in 2020. And uh, we still don't have a president two days later. Um, you may not remember that two years from now, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this. Um, Bureaucracies are slow at counting. That's what we've Bureaucracies are slow. <laughs> yeah. so, someone mentioned to me that the, uh, the Zootopia movie that the- Oh, the sloth, yes. The sloth, that so we're count, counting the, uh, you know, so. One of the all time great moments in an animated film. This whole election cycle has been, if you understand spiral dynamics and you, you begin to piece together the, how blue is expressing itself, how orange is expressing itself how green is expressing itself, which is why it's critical, I think, to, to understand uh, spiral dynamics in all these stages so we can have an appreciation for where, where people are and why people are in different places and be a help maybe in bringing uh, healing uh, into our world. So how do we move from, from, from orange to green? If, if you choose to do that, uh, the circumstances allow us to do that. Um, again, it's not an automatic, but there are some things that can be, uh, that present problems in orange that only the next stage is gonna help us solve, which would be stage green. One of the things in orange is because of all this, this uh, production and acquisition, there's a constant drain on the resources of the world. So the idea that we always have to make more and more and more and more. There's no limit to that. If we're gonna keep the economy going and, uh, and, and our wealth going. So, what Orange begins to see is that, well, maybe there actually are some limits to how much of that we can do. Maybe there are limits to the resources of the earth uh, and the energies toward that. And uh, so it begins to, to, to present a problem that green begins to try to solve in its own, own way. That there, there's, there's limited money, resources, energy, et cetera, that, that uh, we've got to begin to face up to. Um, and we also see this societally and individually. There's, there are limits that we all have too of just that constant expansion of success uh, and uh, acquisition. And uh, so we also may, may in orange begin to realize that there actually is a wealth gap there, that there, there are people in orange that are making just boatloads of money. There are others that seem to be, and maybe it's not entirely just a matter of effort. Maybe, the, as Kimberly was talking about, maybe there's some other aspects to that we need to take a look at and uh, begin to assess what, um, what's going on. And that could be an impetus to move from orange and begin to explore the green um, idea um, of that maybe we are, in fact, you know, privileged in, in, the, in the orange level. And finally, I think the one that, um, uh, that happens is once, once you've 
been in Orange long enough and you've succeeded and you've made lots of wealth and you've done well and you got all of the toys and the, the success and the accolades and everything else that comes along with that. And then there's still perhaps a sense of emptiness or uh, dissatisfaction that may uh, propel us to say, is that all there is? Is, is, is it, is it something more than just the stuff that we've acquired here? Just even if it's just the knowledge, what, is there something more that's, that's deeper and more to the heart of who I am here and who we are together? And so those can be questions that can move us also into uh, um, the deeper meaning that we begin to see again unfolding at the green level, which is where we'll pick up with our next episode.